Good afternoon everybody. Um, I am about to assist a chick out of an egg. Um, it's been pipped for 24 hours, so brief rundown. I have a toothpick, I have a clean chucks, and I have some temperature, like 37.5 degree water, okay, so lukewarm water. I'm just going to go and remove the chick. Now, be mindful, this does not always work and it does not always end successfully. Um, and I do not advise... So, I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere, and but definitely go slow. So, what I'm going to start doing is just with the warm water, softening around the membrane and the egg. And what we want to do is slowly, with the toothpick, start to lift... Hard. It's a bit hard because it's been pipped for too long and it started to dry out in its shell. So generally there's an only reason as to why the chick doesn't hatch. Um, you know, it's either going to be too small or in nature, for whatever reason, they don't hatch. But sometimes we like to intervene, don't we, as humans? Now, I said be really careful when you are actually lifting the eggshell. You don't want to lift the membrane. The reason for the water is so that I can, and warm water, and I can wet the membrane. It's actually three layers. And see whether or not as I go, the chick has actually absorbed everything it needs to inside so that I'm not actually puncturing a blood vessel and making the chick bleed out. Because that is the biggest dilemma we generally have, especially if we try and intervene too early, is that you will hit the membrane. You know, as you can see, I'm just by with the warm water slowly wetting it. Sorry guys, I keep moving. You generally want to try and, you don't want the cheek being out too long. I do have a heat light just to the side of me, um, where the brooder is, so I will probably, in a moment, put this cheek a little bit under heat. All right, so now we can see we've got a good amount of the shell removed. We definitely have a very alive chick in there. But as you can see, the nose of the chick, the chick was never going to get the nose back into the shell to be able to work its way out. If you have nails, you can use your nails as well, I suppose. But again, if you intervene too early and the membrane is not dry, this outer layer membrane will actually come off with the shell and rupture baby now it's a bit wet. I'm going to put it under the light for a moment just to heat it up get some of the shell off hopefully this ends up successful and it's going to lift very carefully this membrane here I normally try and do around the eye first because that's where they generally pop out first. So, as you can see, as I'm lifting, I hope you don't know if you can see that, guys. Let me see if I can zoom in. I'm lifting this outer layer membrane, and there's actually still another inner layer. blood through this process again because you are removing wet membrane from the baby. 
Whereas when the baby normally hatches, she be careful not to poke. And there you go. I always try and look just underneath before I pull. Okay, slowly. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, very, very much the alive chicken here. Struggling. Sometimes I'll get to this point and I may put it back in the incubator to see what it does. But given the, normally with quail I will. Yeah, a lot lower. But with this chick, as I said, it's been pipped for over 24 hours now. And you run the risk of it drying out in the shell. And then we work on this side here, which is always the danger side. It's not easy, it really isn't easy, guys. Another layer of membrane. I'm just trying to separate to have a peek inside as to where the other. There we go. Can't see any veins. Let me have an eye. Hey, baby. Sometimes the heart's up here. Hmm. No, the whole idea is not to rip it out, but it's to loosen it. So it kind of still feels like it's coming out of the shell itself. And again, in order to do that, you have to work really slowly. And be careful not to damage the chick in the process. inner membrane and the outer membrane. Okay. So if you think you can't see any clear, I mean red blood vessels, it's safe to rip off. There we go, little buddy. We have an eye. I'm very much alive. Now this is pretty much past the point of no return. If you're doing this with a chick, you don't let it go. It will not find its way out. It will end up dying in the shell if you do not continue to self-assist. So I said there's no guarantee either. And this is always the right point of action. It's a big risk. See, as you can see as I'm pulling there, and it's lifting some of the membrane. And that's what you gotta be careful of, especially in a chick that's definitely not ready to come out. That's where you'll rip the blood vessels <coughs> and cause them to bleed out and die. Continue to work around the head. A bit more warmth for the baby. So as you can see, I'm just holding the baby under the heat lamp for a minute to warm it up because we really don't want it getting too cold. Now I find that actually chickens are harder to do, primarily because they're bigger. Uh, quail, even though they're smaller and fiddlier, I probably would have worked a bit more around. All right, it's been a while. I could just be being very protective. Yeah. Again, it's not a matter of just ripping the egg out and ripping it out of its shell. You can do the chick great damage. Slowly, methodically, looking underneath. What I can see, I don't know if you can in here. I can't really see any vessels there. And I'm going to pop. But considering she normally comes out this way, I'm going a bit more around the head. And the rest of its body. I think you can chip. Sorry guys, at this stage I'm pretty sure it's well and truly ready to come out so there's not a lot of um, 
lot of vessels still there. If it wasn't ready, generally, as I said, the membrane would actually come off the shell and it'd be pulling away. But I'm pretty sure if I keep pulling this, there's a few small. See the small, tiny membranes, but it doesn't appear to be any big ones, which means this chick is well and truly ready to come out. Okay. You know, and don't expect it to be pleasant or clean. It's definitely to go slowly, messy process. Um, the chick is slightly wet, so I dare say it may have defecated inside the shell. All right. I'm smoking and getting this head out. There we go. There we go, buddy. I'm pretty sure. A little red one there, we want to be careful, I'll see that. We just want to make sure we pull that off carefully. It is indeed already one that's going off and ready to come off the chick. I suggest if you see one like that, you can either start a new place. Yeah, that would be feces. So the chick has already defecated itself inside the shell. Uh, and we're well and truly ready so to come out. So as you can see, that, that blood vessel there was probably absolutely nothing to worry about. We've gotten through most of the shell now. Clear. No great major. And we have a baby chick. Now, what you're going to be careful of is when the chick comes out, the door does come out in one piece. Do not pull it out. It may still be have the umbilical cord attached. Pop it under the heat. <clears throat> Pretty much as soon as you can. And this is where I do try and let the other, the, the bird come out of the shell itself in its own time a little bit more, just to make sure that <clears throat> that umbilical cord has indeed shrunk and is not connected to the shell and we're not going to do the bird any more damage, we'll make it bleed out. So as you can imagine for a little baby bird though to be Caesarean out. And it's probably just as much of a shock for them as what it is for a real baby. And so I do treat them with a bit more care, see, and let him kick himself out until I can actually see the bum and the umbilical cord myself without pulling the egg away. And it's going to be tired. It's been struggling for the last 24 hours to come out, so <clears throat> it's going to be tired. I'm hoping you'll move one more time so I can show you what I mean by the, the bum. See around here, you can tell he's defecated, but I can't tell whether or not the umbilical cord is still attached. So we are going to just pop him down here under the heat lamp to dry out and sort himself out to um, keep these little guys away from him. And we'll get back to you on how he goes.